Hi, and welcome to Rhetoric. Today we are going to talk about this uh, Sound Blaster 1.5 made by uh, David Larson. You think you've probably seen uh, all the videos and all the stuff you need to know about the Sound Blaster, but I think you will be surprised if you watch this video all the way to the end. So, why is a brand new Sound Blaster 1.5 exciting? I will tell you why, and you will not be disappointed. But first, this is the machine we're going to use today, my Amstrad 1640, running at 8 MHz and using our 8088 CPU. Uh, I used to have a Sound Blaster Pro 2 in this machine, and the background noise that the Sound Blaster Pro 2 picked up from this machine was unbearable. So listen to this recording I made a couple of years ago from the Sound Blaster Pro 2. Let's turn everything off except for the master and the FM. We can hear more noise, background noise coming already. Let's uh, try another directory and listen to the sound. Did you hear that? So that was a recording from the Sound Blaster Pro 2 that used to be in this computer. And as you could hear, it was terrible. Creative was not known for low noise on their early Sound Blaster cards. And that was probably one of the reasons why Gravis Ultrasound was so popular when that came out in the early 90s. In my opinion, uh, the Creative Sound Blaster card was not uh, good in that area before around the Sound Blaster 16. This uh, Sound Blaster 1.5 clone uh, is David's own design. And he has been thinking low background noise while designing it. This card has four layers with a separate ground plane. Having a separate ground plane does a huge difference when it comes to reducing noise. He is also using smaller and modern surface mounted components with the exception of the actual and original audio chips. He also redesigned the powerline circuitry. All this highly improves audio quality. He has jumpers for IO address and interrupts. And there is a jumper to enable or disable DMA. DMA is always on channel 1. He has even added not one, but three audio in inputs. So you can connect your CD-ROM. The important chips are the OPL2, the DSP chip, and the two Philips SAA1099 for CMS sound. Talking about CMS, I love that this card has the CMS chips or the Creative Music System chips. I've done a video on that before, you should check it out. The Philips SA1099 was the first chip that Creative used in a sound card. It was called the Game Blaster or the Creative Music System. The CMS sounds almost like a SID chip from the Commodore 64 but with 12 voices, 6 for each channel, to give you stereo sound. I love the sound of the CMS, it does not get more retro than that. What else did David do with his card? Well, he did something easy and smart. He gave us a jumper so we could choose if the audio out should be amplified or line level. For low noise level, this is the way to go. 
Of course, the volume knob at the back loses its meaning when a jumper is set for line level. To summarize the reasons why you should use this card in your retro PC. First, it has a low background noise. Second, it's 100% true compatible with the original Sound Blaster 1.5. It actually uses the same chips as the original Sound Blaster 1.5. The third reason is that this card has the CMS chips already installed. I love to use Creative Music System when the games support that. Remember that CMS was a few years earlier than the OPL2, well, at least on a creative card. So there are a few games out there that supports CMS, but not OPL2. This is the main reason for me being so excited about this card. In my first draft of the script for this video, I wrote that uh, one of the good things about this card was that you did not need a driver. <laughs> but then I realized that just maybe I should fact check that. I then came across this Vogon thread with a list of over 200 games needing one of the three drivers coming with the card. And for increased compatibility with AdLib card, there was a fourth driver. Check out this page for more information and link to the newest drivers. Talking about uh, drivers, uh, according to Moby Games, there are 100 games with uh, CMS support. But that does not mean that you can just fire up a game and choose a creative music system as your sound device. Luckily for us, uh, the blog called Nerdy Pleasure has already identified 83 unique DOS games with CMS support. On this page, you can learn how to make it work with your game. Check it out. And just to make it clear, this is a Sound Blaster clone, so you can always choose Sound Blaster or Adlib in games and programs. And one more and very exciting reason why this is a card you would want in your collection. Maybe you have heard about the VGM player from OPL-X. VGM is basically a format for capturing commands that are sent to a sound chip. But the really cool thing about the VGM player is that you can play back music meant for other chips. How is this possible? Let's first explain what we see on the screen. First, it recognizes the sound card we have. Then it tells us something about the song and the system it came from. And uh, lastly, it tells us what chip the song was made for. Chips like the SAA-1099 uh, or the chip in the NES is basically a square wave chip and therefore they produce very similar sound. And the VGM player is smart enough to convert the data and play all these chips types on the SAA-1099. BAM! That's why you want this card. Let's top it off by playing some more VGM music. If you like to look at square waves, you can check out SidViz Plus on GitHub.
So, before we end this video, I would like to thank uh, David Larson for sending me this card. I'm so glad I now have a Soundblast 1.5 with OPL2 and CMS in my Amstrad PC. I'm gonna enjoy this a lot. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you like this video, you will probably also like a lot of my other videos. I do a lot of videos on sound devices for old PCs. So press like and subscribe and thank you for watching.